So it's not every day that your team plays in a championship game. Sports are funny. You spend years rooting for a team and for the most part they reward you with a handful of magical runs. As a Washington Husky alumni and lifetime fan, we are in one of those special moments. The Huskies coming off a thriller against Texas in the college football semifinal now have a date with Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. The similarities are eerie. The Seahawks had to beat Harbaugh when he was coaching the 49ers at that time in the conference championship game. And this time we have to beat him in the final as a Husky fan. But alas, bring on Michigan. Who knew this rivalry was going to start so soon? Next year, the Huskies in Michigan will be sharing a conference. This year, we aren't trying to share anything. It's time to bring in the most important trophy, in my humble opinion, in all of college sports. A national championship gives you bragging rights for years, it puts you on the national map, and it gives the school an extra pop of prestige. Monday night, Michigan versus Washington, the national championship game. Here's why the Huskies will beat Michigan and become national champions. All right, so the national championship week is upon us. The Huskies are going to do their best to try and be Michigan and bring home a national championship trophy for the first time since 1991. And obviously, if you're a Washington Husky alum like myself, or you're a Washington Husky fan like so many who didn't go to the university, or if you're a resident of Seattle or the Montlake area or anywhere or anything to do with Husky football, you know how excited Husky Nation is, how excited fans are, and just how excited the city of Seattle is right now for the Huskies to be where they are. But let's start off with some reasons why I think the Huskies will beat Michigan. And let's start off with the first reason. The best offensive line in football, in my opinion. A team that's offensive line is dominant. A team that's offensive line can block anyone. So yes, Michigan does have a superb, elite, and great defense. But that doesn't mean I don't think the Huskies can actually go ahead and overcome that with their amazing offensive line play that gives Penix time, that gives Dylan Johnson, who's going to look, who looks like most likely is going to play in this game time to run the ball and give us an ability to move the chains, keep the ball in our hands and have Penix make those big throws to Dunze, Polk and McMillan and Westover, who was actually phenomenal in that college football playoff game, time to make big plays. And that gets me to my second point. Out of the top five graded players in the semifinals, and that's all four teams, Alabama, Michigan, UW, and Texas, out of the top five graded player, three of those guys were Washington Huskies with the number one overall, according to PFF, being Michael Penix Jr., Traylon Price, Braylon Trice, sorry about that. And of course, Jack Westover had a great game and he was really highly rated. Those three of the top five players in the college football playoffs were Washington Huskies. So that means, in my opinion, we have just a more talented bunch of players. And Michigan's very talented, don't get me wrong. You don't get to 14 and 0 like they are and we are and get to the national championship game if you're not talented, obviously. So they are very talented as well. But I think the Huskies' talent might be just slightly better, even though they weren't talented coming out of high school because, as you know, we have the least amount of four and five star athletes in this game. Number three, I think the best player in college football world, and he proved it again against Texas. He proved it against Oregon twice. He proved it against USC. Michael Penix Jr. And somehow they did not give him the Heisman Trophy. And I got to just like play my face there for a second because I'm going to bite my tongue because this story is not about why he should have won the Heisman Trophy. But he is the best player in college football. I would love if there was an opportunity, which is not going to happen, to play Jaden Daniels. I think he beat LSU and out him too. He's done everything he can in every single circumstance this year and most of last year to prove that he might be the best quarterback in the nation, plain and simple. But I think he's definitely the best player in the nation and or at least, at worst, the best player still playing right now. 
Number four, I actually don't think that the Michigan offense can keep up with the Huskies offense. I think, look, uh, I think one thing has to give, right? Either the Huskies offense is going to struggle against a Michigan defense or the Huskies offense is going to do well against the Michigan vaunted defense. But that means Michigan, if the Huskies do well, there is, I don't think there's a way J.J. McCarthy and that offense can match us in points. I think that offense is not as explosive as, as us. And when that is the case, I don't think it's actually possible that if our offense hums the way I think our offense is going to hum, that Michael Penix Jr. is going to be outdueled by J.J. McCarthy and Michigan is going to be able to keep up with the amount of points the Huskies are going to score. Plain and simple. That's why I think if this game gets into any sort of shootout, it goes into the Huskies' favor. And if the game doesn't get into a shootout and it's a close game, I think the Huskies, as we know, nine straight games decided by 10 or less points know how to close out a close game at the end of a game and would be able to get over that hump. Number five, many are saying that Michigan is built to stop teams like the Huskies with a great passing attack and an off the offense that is able to be explosive. And they point out evidence last year against CJ Stroud, this year against Ohio State. They point this out a lot of the times. But what they're not realizing here is that the Washington Huskies actually, actually, aren't like Ohio State. They're not like the Big Ten. Why? Well, one, I think they're better, but two, this game is in a neutral field, in a dome stadium in Houston, without the elements. Sure, it's gonna be easier to stop CJ Stroud last year for Michigan when it's snowing. It's also gonna be easier this year in Ann Arbor, where it's cold, and the elements, I don't remember if that game snowed or not, but the elements aren't a neutral field. So I don't think, I know Michigan's built for this, but I think they're built for Big Ten football. While in theory, the Washington Huskies are actually more built to play inside of a dome. And we saw that what they did in the Sugar Bowl where they didn't struggle one bit on offense. That's what the Huskies are built for. And that's why the Huskies are gonna have no problem moving the football. So here we are. Overall, what do I think this game is gonna do here? Plain and simple. I think the Washington Huskies are going to beat the Michigan Wolverines 31 to 21. They're going to play some basketball on grass. By the way, if you like that saying, we did make t-shirts, basketball on grass. I linked them here. Uh, here, I'll put it up here for you to see in the screen. And we also linked them down below in the description. And the first comment has those shirts for you, basketball on grass. So the Huskies are going to play basketball on grass and they're gonna beat the Michigan Wolverines in a final score of 31 to 21 and bring home the national championship. Kalen DeBoer brings home a national championship and all of a sudden we're looking at a Huskies team that we will be going to the Big Ten as national champions and in a weird way representing the Pac-12 for the last time giving the Pac-12 its first and only college football playoff championship. Huskies 31, Michigan 21. And this is the Sports on Tap Seattle. If you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe to this channel. We really appreciate it. And make sure to share this video with some friends and go Huskies. Let's bring home the national championship.